Everything Klaus Schwab says about the Great Reset is a lie. Elon Musk is trying once again to expose the truth and help us see through the falsehoods and dishonesties of the oligarchs in their attempt to change the world as we know it. But what is the Great Reset, and what does Elon Musk have to do with any of it? Let's find out how Elon Musk is helping us expose the lies and see the real truth. The Great Reset When a person or company doesn't comply with their agenda, things take an ugly turn. The S&P 500 kicked Tesla out of its ESG index when it made its annual update. Releasing a statement, S&P explains that Tesla lacks a low-carbon strategy and codes of business conduct. To give more backing to its position, the statement accused Tesla of racial discrimination and negligent working conditions at its Fremont factory in California. As a final note in its statement full of untruths, the rating agency underscored. While Tesla may be playing its part in taking fuel-powered cars off the road, it has fallen behind its peers when examined through a wider ESG lens. Although Tesla was removed from the ESG list, companies like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and even oil and gas multinational ExxonMobil were left on the list taking the top spots. With the latest move, Elon Musk tweeted, decrying the global rating agency as a scam and an agency weaponized by phony social justice warriors. America and the West were caught off guard and slowly sucked into the corporate takeover of global governance. Now, many people believe that it is too late to resist the pull of the oligarchs leading to the World Economic Forum. They are the elite of the world's economic and political leaders who think they know what is best for everyone else and see themselves as saviors who must protect the rest of us from our own short-sightedness. They buy information and knowledge, dominating the world's levers through strategic acquisition of influential organizations like the United Nation, the World Health Organization, and NIH, NATO, and a host of three-letter organizations such as the NSA, FDA, and CIA. The United Nations, an organization created on the concept of unity, has been quietly transformed into a public-private partnership giving multinational corporations a say in global governance. This group of a few are the world's leading politicians, bankers, businessmen, and bureaucrats attempting to create what they call an equitable and more prosperous future. The scope of the Great Reset is wide, covering climate change, the future of work, technology, international security, jobs, and environmental policies. In Schwab's work, the sovereign state has become obsolete and no longer sufficient for handling increasingly complex global crises. But their plan is a little light on key details and more sinister than you might think. Governments are put to the sidelines, removing the place of democratic institutions as unelected stakeholders take their place in global decision-making. Food supply will be treated as a commodity instead of something we can all just enjoy. The big tech companies will be above national and global regulations, thus increasing their power over the government. United Health and access to vaccines in developed and third world countries will be treated as investment opportunities in a way to further their interests. While Klaus Schwab and the WEF are preaching the Great Reset as the solution, we will all pay the price as the oligarchs attempt to re-engineer economies and societies. But before that happens, make sure to hit the like button if you are enjoying the video and subscribe for more. The Elon Musk-sized plot hole but even the most perfect crimes can't go without a hitch. Increased life insurance and Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter have put cracks in the WEF's armor. His acquisition of Twitter was met with concern from his fiercest critics and mainstream media in accurately framing his attentions behind the purchase while forgetting that Jeff Bezos owns Washington Post and Rupert Murdoch owns Fox Networks. They also seem to conveniently leave out Bill Gates' involvement in mainstream media, bankrolling outlets like CNN, NBC, PBS, Al Jazeera, BBC, The Atlantic, The Financial Times, The Daily Telegraph, Le Monde, and El Pace to the tune of $319 million. It's not Musk's intention behind the purchase that draws their annoyance, but his clasp over their control of the media. Twitter is regarded as a sort of digital town square, and Elon Musk purchasing Twitter affects the oligarch's control of one of the major communication platforms in the world in their attempt to streamline information. With the acquisition, all the lies that have been covered up under layers of misinformation will be exposed as more people learn about the fabricated pandemic, their spreading influence and control in government, and the Great Reset. 
It is plain to see that Elon Musk has been exempted from the World Economic Forum Great Reset as mainstream media tries to lump him in with the WEF extremists and sociopaths. But he is not. Sociopaths are skilled, well-liked, popular, and charismatic individuals capable of gaining trust and deceiving just about anyone from the general public to police officers. They can make just about anything they say sound right, like Justin Trudeau, Joe Biden, and Boris Johnson parroting the same Build Back Better talking points of the World Economic Forum. The sociopath hungers for power and dominance, something that was made clear by Klaus Schwab when he proclaimed, the future is not just happening. The future is built by us, by a powerful community such as you here in this room. A sociopath is ruthless in the pursuit of their goals, reflecting their unsuccessful attempts to short-sell Tesla stock for billions of dollars and bankrupt Elon Musk when he spoke out against their agenda. As someone who probably has Asperger's syndrome, it would be difficult for Musk to display any of those qualities. People with Asperger's tend to be socially awkward, making it challenging for them to perform well in social situations and become generally well-liked. They are typically good with handling machines and dealing with numbers in exchange for social skills, unlike the likes of Schwab, Tony Fauci, and Bill Gates. If you find it hard to believe that a group of elite few are trying to make decisions for humanity without humanity's consent, it is a good time to remember that some of the most influential people in the world and young leaders identify with Klaus Schwab WEF and its agenda. Akin to a villain monologuing his master plan, Schwab stated, what we are proud of now is the young generation, like Prime Minister Trudeau, the President of Argentina, and so on, so we now penetrate the cabinets. Top-notch lawyers like Reiner Fulmich have gathered thousands of pieces of scientific evidence proving the crimes of Klaus Schwab and the WEF against humanity, but he still remains the leader of one of the most influential global organizations. These are the same people that implemented draconian measures to stop something cold in its tracks in the world of Tony Fauci, despite knowing that the lockdown would have collateral consequences on the economy and school children. All it did was kick out small businesses and give multinational corporations more legroom. When mainstream media tries to convince you that Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter is evil and accuses his other ventures of serious crimes, remember that these were the same news outlets that sided with the corporate world, informing the public that vaccines were safe with no severe side effects like heart attack. These were the same media outlets paid by Bill Gates that sold Remsevere as the foremost treatment for COVID-19, with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approving the drug, not considering its failed test trials and the reports of an expert panel. If you still believe everything mainstream media says about Elon Musk, listen to the stories of Drs. George Fareed and Brian Tyson, who use ivermectin, a low-cost drug that was deemed only suitable for animals, to treat every patient of COVID-19, saving 10,000 lives in the process. Rather than receiving praise for their efforts, their clinical studies were censored with attacks on their reputations and license to practice medicine. Brian Tyson was banned on Twitter and Facebook for espousing early COVID treatment, and videos posted by them were taken down by YouTube. Denouncing Anthony Fauci's comments that there were no early patient treatments for COVID, Dr. Tyson said, Dr. Fauci is notorious for discounting treatment that work in favor of things that make money. This conversation is starting to be more widely accepted. When Elon Musk is being accused of hindering free speech, ask them whether or not Facebook and Instagram are welcoming of counter viewpoints or allowing news outlets to question the policies and actions of the government and other influential people. Meanwhile, Musk is inviting even his harshest critics to remain on Twitter because he believes that is what free speech means. The contribution of oligarchs to society aren't just about giving people the means to achieve their ambitions, but telling people what they must do and how they should do it. The time has come for us to step in and take control of our fundamental liberties as they are slowly starting to realize that the Great Reset has no place in our world. Do you think Elon's purchase of Twitter is a right step for free speech? Write yes or no in the comments below. In case you want to watch more fascinating videos, click the videos on the screen now. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications turned on.